The process of delivering power from the generating plant to the customer is a challenging one. A complex system of interconnected wires and equipment must be in place, designed and constructed to work efficiently every hour of every day, and capable of being brought back online in a timely manner whenever nature or man temporarily interrupts its flow. During the next few minutes, we're going to trace the path of electricity from the generation plant to the homes and businesses where it's used and discuss the equipment utilities use to assure that power is available whenever a customer reaches for that electric switch. The bulk power supplied to our customers is purchased through Seminole Electric Cooperative, a Tampa-based generation and transmission cooperative. This power comes from two principal sources. Some of it is produced by two coal-fired 600 megawatt generators located at the Seminole Electric Power Plant in Palatka. And the remainder is purchased from other generation sources and fed into our system. Electricity must be used as soon as it's generated. As a result, a maze of interconnected wires must exist every step of the way, from the generator at the power plant right to the light switch in the home or the business, to pass power from one place to another. The power generated at the Seminole plant leaves the facility at 23,000 volts, a level too low to economically transport at long distances. Because of that, the power is routed through a step-up transformer, where it's boosted to 230,000 volts. This higher voltage level ensures that the generated electricity can be sent long distances with a minimum amount of line loss. The generated electricity is next directed away from the power plant along high voltage overhead lines, which are called transmission lines. These heavy lines strung between tall towers eventually connect to the transmission lines of other electric utilities to form a grid. The grid is much like an interstate highway system with its multitude of roads moving traffic onto and off of the main thoroughfare. It's this network of roads, large and small, that allows us all to travel to a particular destination. Similarly, Florida's utilities have developed a highway of interconnecting transmission lines to make certain that electricity being generated from both in-state and out-of-state sources is available and able to reach its ultimate destination, the customer. The Florida transmission grid ensures that electric service can be quickly restored from another source if a power plant connected to the grid trips offline unexpectedly and also allows some electric utilities connected to the grid to purchase power from other sources more economically than they can sometimes produce it. In Florida, transmission lines vary in size and carry power at levels ranging anywhere from 69,000 volts to 500,000 volts. Some transmission lines are routed through transmission substations which are used to change the voltage level passing through the substation, either up or down. Other transmission lines deliver the power directly to distribution substations. Distribution substations are strategically located throughout the service territory and are used to reduce the voltage being fed into them to a level appropriate for the area the substation is serving. Their placement in the system is based on customer density and the electric load requirements of the vicinity. Power from the distribution substations is next routed to main distribution lines. Main distribution lines are often referred to as primary lines or feeders. These lines carry power at either 7,200 volts or at 14,400 volts. Main distribution lines feed power to a variety of customers with a number of different electrical requirements. But these customers can be divided into two basic categories primary service customers and secondary service customers. Primary service customers are large industries and institutions which use electricity at high voltage levels. Quite often, primary service customers use their own transformers to reduce the voltage being fed to them to the levels they need to operate their business. Secondary service customers are small commercial businesses and residential accounts which use power at lower voltage levels. The power these customers receive can be anywhere from 120 volts to 480 volts. 
Electricity is fed to them through nearby pole-mounted distribution transformers, or pad-mounted transformers for underground service, which reduce the voltage to a level that meets their specific needs. Electricity is then sent along a service drop, the line which stretches from a distribution transformer in the vicinity to the customer. The service drop is the final link of the path which sends electricity from the power plant to the homes and businesses we serve. Now, let's take a moment to discuss some of the equipment electric utilities use to assure that the power being generated, transmitted, and distributed gets to the customer with a minimum amount of service interruption. Today's power plants generate clean, regulated, 60-cycle electric power. But once that power leaves the plant, any number of things can happen which inhibit its ability to get to the customer. Some of these deterrents are triggered by the sheer force of nature. Others are caused by man. And so a series of protective devices are in place along the system to guard and watch over the power being distributed. To assure that the generated electricity reaches its destination at an acceptable voltage, voltage regulators are placed in substations and on distribution circuits throughout the system. These regulators monitor variations in the voltage level being delivered and correct that voltage level up or down when necessary. We're all well aware that factors beyond the control of the electric utility can periodically cause the electric current feeding homes and businesses to short circuit and trigger an outage. Although cataclysmic problems have occasionally affected the generation or the transmission portions of the system, the vast majority of power disruptions occur somewhere along the distribution system. The two most common causes of these power line short circuits or faults, as they're also called, are tree limbs coming in contact with nearby power lines and lightning strikes along the system. To minimize the effects of any power disruption, electric utilities divide their distribution system up into sections, with each section overseen by a series of protective devices. Whether the devices are breakers, reclosers, or fuses, their main purpose is to isolate the faulted area from the rest of the system when a problem occurs, thus reducing the number of people affected by the fault, damage to equipment in the area of the fault, and the time it takes to locate and repair the problem. When lightning strikes in close proximity to a power line, it can trigger a voltage surge which travels along the distribution line until it's short-circuited by a lightning arrestor. These arresters are interspersed throughout the system and are designed to conduct the lightning-induced surge harmlessly into grounding rods driven deep into the soil below. Another common site along transmission lines and distribution lines are insulators. Insulators come in various sizes and shapes and are made of a non-conductive material. Insulators have one important job to do to keep electricity flowing along the line and away from areas where it's not wanted. All of the protective devices just discussed are placed throughout the system, along the distribution lines, in the substations, and in any other area where trouble might potentially occur to assure that a reliable supply of power is available whenever and wherever it's needed. Today, electricity has quietly become our nation's most important energy resource. Having access to it is now as simple as reaching out and flipping a switch. But as you've just seen, the path electricity takes from the power plant to the customer is not quite so simple. Keeping this system functioning properly, while also protecting it from problems caused by nature and man, are ongoing challenges electric utilities face every minute of the day every day of the year.